I don't know if a belt or a specific belt like like measured, you know, like quantified a certain period, but like you're trained to believe that man, you want these belts for you know for validation. And so my BA belt is my first championship I ever won. It has a special place. And then of course you want the green belt. Floyd had it, Ali had it, so I want that green belt. So you want those belts for those kind of reasons. But then when you get them, you start to do the math. Like, bro, I get sick randomly sometimes when I think about, just use my last two fights, the amount of sanction fees that I had to pay. It kind of takes away the, the love for it, you know? Now the Ring Magazine belt, I love that belt. No fees, <laughs> no fees, and you're the guy with that belt. Like I'm, I'm recognized as as the guy. So I love the Ring Magazine belt. It's got great history. With all these other other belts, man, it's robbery. And I stand on that. Please, I, I would love to talk to any of these guys. And I was trying to put some together with Mauricio. We had sort of like an open dialogue and debate about what these things are about. Explain to me how you justify taking 3%. Like we come to, and fighters aren't supposed to talk about this stuff. We just supposed to shut up and fight, you know? But those days are over. And nobody can explain to me who enacted these sanctioning bodies. Who came up with 3%? Why is it not five? Why is it not one? Why is it not two? And is it gonna increase at any point in time? And then that 3%, what are you doing with it? Now Mauricio came with a, a list of things, oh, we're helping fighters, this and that. Shouldn't I have some say in where my money goes? Like you can opt into this or you cannot opt in, but if you opt in, it's helping fighters who get hurt in the ring, fighters who need benefits. Like I'm down to do that if I can opt in and I probably will opt in sometime because I want to see fighters get help. But you're just trained to just, just do it. You're a champion. Yeah, but he's also a champion. He's also a champion. It's not right, man. But we just accept these things in boxing, man. And, I, and I'll never, certain things in this sport, I'll never accept. I'll never just go along to get along. You know, I'm not going to you know, bang the table every time I got a camera in my face. But when it's appropriate, I'm going to say something about it. And I hope to be a part of change one day. You know, to have governance over these people, to have pension plans, to have things that fighters, if you want to prepare for life after, you can do it. NFL has courses. They have financial courses where these guys can come. They don't always take advantage of it, but you can come and get, get educated, like we said. But it's not really beneficial a lot of times for the powers that be to do that. Ignorance is, 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 is a great currency in this sport. What's even more frustrating is when you broach some of these topics, how there's no interest. It's, it's crickets, you know? Like nobody wants to, it's like, ah, right, man, shut up. Don't say that. My pension, like, no, you know, like, and you see people, like people will reach out to me, like people I don't really know, like, hey, I'm trying to get something going. It's just, it's, we're like the redheaded stepchild in professional sports, but people love us though. It's like, man, you're interesting to be around, man. Like, I wouldn't like, I want to be around you too much, but like every now and again, like I'm gonna come hang out with you. Like on fight night, it's cool. We come all the different sports, entertainers, yeah. but like they don't want to kick it with us like that because they know how dysfunctional we are. It's sad, bro. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. Um, I wish, I wish fighters knew how much power they had. Like, imagine if fighters. And I know this is like way out there. But imagine the fighters like collectively got together and didn't say, we're not fighting. We're not fighting. Who's gonna fight? I'm talking about like the, the core ones. Like we're gonna hold out until these things get done and we start getting some, some collective help around these areas. Just like, it's just that, that talk is like way out there, but like, what is it gonna take? Like, I love this sport, man, but like, there's nothing worse than seeing a fighter who dedicated 20 years of his life, and he has to take some responsibility for it, but to see him like shuffle in a room, and all he gets is like a round of applause, or he's called champ a few times, but you know financially he ain't there. You know neurologically he's not there, and he can't get any help. There's no medical help, there's no financial help, there's no help, and we just accept it and say it's okay. But then if you speak out against it, you're weird, you're an outlier. And I can't change everything myself, man, but like, I'm gonna speak up when I feel compelled to speak up. And I'm not really interested in how I'm viewed, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's cool. 
you know, I could be misunderstood or whatever. It's all good. Like I've accepted that, that that's kind of my role sometimes. But it's really about love and care for these guys, man, because I want us to I want us to I love seeing former fighters, man. It's rare to see them shining, man. They come in the room at a fight, like, man, you look like you're doing good. Man, we don't see it. We don't see it. So, but I wish we knew how much power we really had though. Fighters don't fight, who's making money? Think about it. I personally don't, I don't feel like I took a lot of losses in negotiations for fights. You know, I feel like we maxed out there, you know, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, my manager, James Prince and our relationship. It's just interesting to see the plays that we're trying to come across and that we're trying to, that they were trying to pull. That, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it wasn't like I took the L, but it's like, wow, like if we didn't know any better, if I couldn't read between the lines, if I didn't understand this fine print or know how to counter this, we'd be in trouble. So it was more, it was more that, you know, it was more that. And uh, yeah, it was more, it was more just the treachery, man. I'm just no other word to really describe it that you see in here when it comes to professional prize fighting. You know, it's not always set up for the fighter to win. Um, it's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes. That's why personally me, when you see a, a Crawford Spence situation, selfishly as a, as a fan, I won it like yesterday. But, but knowing that I've walked them shoes, I get that paperwork right. You're talking about tens of millions of dollars. The, the public wants it now, but we gotta make sure this is right. It's a lot of streams of income. There's two sides. This side wants this, we want that. We gotta figure that out. But we gotta make sure all the money's on the table and it's being split in the right direction. So that's why I don't overreact when things take a long time. It's not that these, these guys are warriors. They've been fighting since they've been kids. They, it's not that they don't want it. It's gotta be right. So. Um, I respect the processes, I guess is what I'm saying. How difficult does that, <clears throat> does that tension become though, right? You talk so much about this being a financial decision, you have to make money, so that you know how to make money, especially in retirement, you talk about your projects, right? But like, so many different fans want these fights, and the fighters want these fights. How do you fix the tension between being a warrior and being somebody who has to make some money when it comes to how long the contract negotiations take? On a personal level? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, from your perspective, you yeah. did it. I can't ask nobody yeah. else, you know what I mean? I mean, it's... it's uh, it's, a, it's some deals that just don't make sense. It's just some deals that don't make sense. And a deal will come across your desk and you look at it and it's high risk, low reward. And you gotta be, you gotta be stubborn a little bit as a businessman in the sport. And, you, and, and just understand when you, when you become stubborn, everybody's not gonna understand you. You're gonna be misunderstood. Things are gonna be said that aren't true. And I've learned you know, the hard way to, to try to stay in the pocket and not get too high with that or get too low or, or even take it personal. You know, when I was younger in my career, I took a lot of stuff personal. You know, I'm kind of built like that. You get slighted, it's like, all right, I'm gonna show you. As I got older, you know, going through the lawsuit period, I learned a lot, like, man, this is just business. I'm not like, I expect you to do that. So what's my counter? So I think um, when it comes to negotiations, like I don't respect, like you can tell, it's a lot of ways to duck a fight these days. You know, Bernard talked about it yesterday, Bernard Hopkins, uh, in one of these interviews I saw that fighters hide behind managers, fighters hide behind promoters, they hide behind propaganda. Well, I tried, he didn't want it, that kind of stuff. The fans don't really know, they choose a side and we don't get the real story. Fighters can duck by, they can have a good deal on the table and they just don't want to fight that fighter and they can keep moving the goalposts. I don't respect that. And you kind of sense when that's happening it's different with a Spence and Crawford where the fight's gonna happen, but bro, we gotta figure this out. Okay, man, we got past the percentage. Okay, now we gotta figure out the sponsorship. Now we gotta figure, figure out the gate. Now we gotta figure out this split. And that, like, that's just business. Like, and if you guys knew all the details of how that stuff is being played out, there would be a lot more respect for both of these guys because they're literally putting their business hats on saying, we're gonna do the warrior thing, but we're securing our, our future right now. So it's a fine line, bro, it's a fine line. But you can kind of tell when somebody's ducking a situation yeah. and using money as a reason and an excuse versus two guys just trying to make sure the business is handled. And I've been very outspoken against the sanctioning bodies. Um, you know, I've had decent relationships with, with some of the sanctioning body heads personally, but the structure, I don't appreciate it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like it and like, Explain to me why you create a belt that's not even real. It's not real gold, it's not real rubies. 
It's not sterling silver on those belts. Like that stuff is collecting dust in my office right now. And the gold is chipped, the, the, the plated gold is chipping away. It's not real. So I have to pay to fight for a championship. 3%. And certain <coughs> fighters, they get to a point where they can negotiate it down and different things, but that's that's a top 5% or something like that. I don't appreciate it and I don't I don't I don't agree with it. And I think I think there needs to be um, I think they need to be governed a lot stricter and it's tough because you're like you're in this space so you got to play the game you know but like as a whole I don't respect it like what, what have you done to deserve three percent of my purse and you can change a ranking just like that you can drop me and put me put somebody else in place and I've dealt with that with with the WBC twice you know where I didn't have uh, a number one content or mandatory challenger i had been out of the ring but there had been no movement we're like hey i don't have a mandatory challenger and i was literally stripped so anthony Durrell could fight for the belt so i took that i was like all right i'll take that when i have been out you don't like based on your bylaws you don't have the right to do this but we'll, we'll go with that anthony Durrell got in a car accident i mean a motorcycle accident he restored me as as, as the, the full champion then it happened again and it, so that at that point, I gave the belt back. If you can play with, with the, the belts and the championship that easily, you haven't earned 3%. Like, why am I giving you 3% of my person? Then we have multiple sanctioned bodies. So now the three is, is 9%. If I fight for three belts, it's 9% now. Like, it's just unheard of. It's unheard of. So I don't respect it, bro. And nobody can convince me otherwise. You tell me what those guys are doing to deserve to take, to have their hand in a fighter's pocket. Nobody can do it. And I've had conversations with Mauricio about it. He's, we're champion, this is what we're doing. Listen, man, explain to me what you've done to deserve that. Like, what have you done? What are you guys doing? And I'm not even sharing the half of what I know. This is the PG version, this is the, the, you know what I'm saying? I'm keeping it clean. It's treacherous, man. Shouldn't be happening. But you gotta play the game. You got to play the game. If you're a promoter, you got to play the game. So, but I don't respect it at all. Uh, we were talking about dysfunction in boxing uh, earlier. But the titles, what does it mean to be undisputed in 2023? Like, people talk about it, but when you talk about sanctioning by fees, what does it all mean? Like, Devin Haney's the undisputed lightweight champion, but if he were to fight Javante or Ryan, he probably the B-side of that fight. Maybe. What, what, do you think it's watered down, the concept of undisputed? It can be. I think the whole championship Mantra is watered down. I think the whole thing is watered down just based on what the sanctioning bodies have done, not the fighters. Um, but as far as like a unified champ or, or undisputed champ, I think I think for me, I value it based on how you got it. Who'd you beat? You know, like you could have got it by fighting four guys. Nobody knows. I'm undisputed champ. You are technically, but like you didn't really fight nobody. Right. So that's kind of how I put my value on it. Um, but I think Haney going over and doing what he did. You know, Cambosis ain't a world beater, but you know, he's a good fighter. And to go down under like that twice, it's hard, man. 60,000 fans, like like Dev could have froze. And he stood up. So to me, I look at him like he's a genuine undisputed champion. As far as the money, that's the sad part. That's the tough part because you got to pay for it. You know, and that's why I didn't really um, want to fight Adonis Stevenson and go after that fight, number one, because he I didn't respect the way he went about his business. Didn't fight Kovalev, and then I came up and fought him. So I'm like, bro, you, I did the heavy lifting. Now you want to come back, we're not going to do that. Plus it was the money. I'm, I'm doing the math, like, man, three, 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 it's just too much. So it's tough, man. Those kind of things are not, I see a day when it's going to change. But we got to just come together, man. We got to put our heads together as fighters. And we got we to gotta make some tough decisions.